Hi everyone, this is going to be my second video exploring the chiaroscuro technique. In this video I'll also be folding a square, but this one will be a little bit more of a blocky square that actually is two concentric squares. It has that same illusory effect with the shadows when you shine a light on it that changes when you rotate it. And there's variations on this which I'll describe too. This is another one of my favorite that's the same concept but it's just a little bit skinnier. If you missed my first video, I'll link to that here and down in the description. I'll also be releasing more videos with this technique. The next one will be a spiral. Make sure you're subscribed and that you've clicked the notification bell so you don't miss that. Now I explained the history of the technique and some artists that have explored it before me in my last video, so I'm just going to splice that in here. This technique was first explored in depth by Andrea Russo and then was also explored widely by Benjamin Parker, which is where I first discovered the technique. You can find their explorations into the chiaroscuro technique on either of their Flickr pages or on Benjamin's website. I'll link to all of that below. They've both done some amazing and creative things with it. The possibilities with the chiaroscuro technique are endless, so I highly recommend you check out their work. But I'll have the history and the links to the other artists down in the description, so let's get down to folding. Now I'm starting with the colored side up and we're going to be folding a 16 by 16 diagonal grid. So if you watched my last video on this technique, it'll be the exact same grid that we folded in that video. So if you already know how to do this, you can skip ahead. Just look down in the progress bar and then you'll see the chapter titled Folding the Squares. You can skip ahead to that one. Otherwise, just follow along here. And we're gonna valley fold in half along both of the diagonals. So we'll bring this right corner over to the left corner. Now line both those corners up and then crease it all the way across. And then unfold. Now bring the bottom corner up to the top corner. And crease that corner to corner. And then unfold. Now bring the top corner down to the center of the paper where this X is. And crease that down. And now bring the bottom corner up to the same center of the paper. Now unfold the bottom corner. And then we'll bring that bottom corner up to the center of the top edge. And then unfold. Now bring that bottom corner up to the center of the crease closest to it. and then unfold and then unfold the top corner as well. Now we're going to bring that top corner down to the center of the second crease from the bottom. And then unfold. Now bring that top corner down to the center of the crease closest to it. and then unfold. Now we'll rotate the paper and we're gonna repeat all of those steps on this side. So we'll bring that top corner down to the center and bring the bottom corner up to the center. And then unfold the bottom and bring that bottom corner up to the center of the top edge. And unfold. And bring the bottom corner up to the center of the crease closest to it. And then unfold and unfold the top. Bring the top corner down to the center of the second crease from the bottom. and unfold. Then bring the top corner into the center of the crease closest to it. And unfold. 
Now turn the paper over. Now we're going to divide each of these sections in half and we'll do that by making some pleats. So we'll start with this bottom corner. We're gonna bring that up to the center of the crease closest to it. Next, we're going to take that crease that we just folded to and we're gonna form that into a mountain fold and then we're gonna bring it up to this next crease. Just like that. And then we're just going to repeat that with the next crease and bring it up to the next one. and do that one more time. And now rotate, and we'll repeat those steps on this side of the paper. Now we will unfold everything and then flatten it all out. Now rotate the paper and repeat all of those steps here. Bring the bottom corner up. Then form the next crease and bring it up to the next one and repeat. and repeat. And then rotate, repeat all those steps here. And then unfold all of that. And now we're going to turn the paper over and then we'll rotate so it's oriented like this. Next, we're going to bring this bottom edge into the center, but we're not going to crease it all the way across. So we're going to leave gaps that are two squares wide. Um, I'll fold this first and then show you what I mean. If you need to find the center, then you can just follow two diagonals in to meet each other. And then that'll be the center right there. So we'll bring this bottom edge up. Then we'll start the crease in the middle and then we'll fold it two squares to the right and two squares to the left. And then unfold. Now, as you can see, that crease stops with two squares left on the right. And then on the left, it ends right there with two squares on the left. Now we're going to repeat that with the other three sides and this will form a square. The easiest way to do that is just rotate and then repeat. So bring that up to the center. And crease it two squares to the right, two squares to the left, and then unfold. And then rotate and repeat. Rotate and repeat. So for this next step, we're going to make another square that's inside of that one. And we're going to fold the edge up to the crease we just made. But this time our crease that we make is only going to be two squares wide. So it'll be one square on the right and one square on the left. So just like before, I'll fold this first and then show you what I mean. So I'm bringing this edge up to this crease. 
which is the top edge of that square we made in the last steps. Then I start that crease in the middle and do one square to the right, one square to the left. And then unfold. So yeah, it just runs and covers this square and this square. And then just like before, we will rotate and repeat. Rotate and repeat. Oops. And rotate and repeat. Now we have two concentric squares. And we're going to start collapsing this, so I'm going to rotate it. Now how this will work is we're going to pleat all the way up. And then when those pleats intersect with this outer square, they're going to change direction. So looking at this mountain fold, once it hits the square, it will run this direction and then connect with this other mountain fold that runs out to the edge. And then the ones that go past that, once they hit the inner square, they'll change direction again. So this mountain fold here hits that square, angles this way, then it'll hit the inner square, angle this way, and then change direction there and there again. And the way we collapse this, it should be a lot easier than it sounds. So um, we're going to form these pleats running all the way up. Just using the existing creases that we have. Next, we're going to form the outer square. If you folded the single square in the last video I made, it's going to be the exact same steps as that. But if you look um, right here where the square starts, you can notice the corner of that outer square. We're going to be forming this mountain fold that runs in between these two. And this is the outer corner of that square. We'll be forming the square as we make these creases as well. But you notice this mountain fold right here. We can squeeze the edges into the of the paper in. And you can see that. And then next, we're going to form this next crease as a valley fold. And if we're pressing on the outsides as we do this, it will start to form that square. It'll continue forming that square. And then next, we're going to pop this next crease up as a mountain fold. And the next one as a valley fold. I'll open that a little bit so you can see what just happened and understand it a little better. Now we'll just continue that process, but they'll be shrinking on this end. So the next one's a mountain fold. Then a valley fold. Then a mountain fold. Then you can close it all up. You should be able to push it together like this, and there will be just these four flaps sticking out. Now I'm going to open this just to show you. This is the square we had from the last video. But for this next step, we need to change a couple of creases right where that inner square is. So if you notice right here, we're looking at this mountain fold that runs in, and then you can see where it hits this inner square. It's gonna change direction to a mountain fold and connect with the other one. And then the crease just below it will turn into a valley fold. 
Then the crease below that will be a mountain fold. And if you work the paper from both sides as you press this together, you should be able to close it all up again. This time we have two long flaps and two short flaps. And now, if you just open that back up, and you'll set it down. You don't want to flatten it completely. You want to make sure you still have the ridges where the mountains and valleys are. And then we are done. You can rotate it around to see how the light interacts with it. It actually looks the best if you only use one light. And then you can rotate that around. You can try raising or lowering the light that you're using and see how that affects the shadows. Now this can be folded without adding any of these extra creases that we have for the grid. Now I'll post the crease pattern. If you do that, it looks like this. But I'll post the crease pattern down below if you want to fold that without the grid lines. Um, they can get a little distracting, so it looks great if you can do it without them. It is quite a bit more difficult to do. But I'll post the crease pattern down below. Um, you'll just have to fold only the creases that are on the crease pattern. Now you can modify this design by just changing the size of either one of these inner squares. Making it either bigger or smaller, and the square itself either skinnier or wider. One of my favorite modifications is this one. All I did was move that inner square out one grid line and then did everything else the same. But I'll show you a few other examples here and then feel free to explore this and have some fun with it. There's a ton of different options. Also, don't forget to check out Andrea Russo and Benjamin Parker's work that I've linked down in the description. They've both done some really unique and incredible things with it. And of course, make sure you're subscribed because next week I'll be teaching a spiral using this technique. And I have some other videos planned after that. But again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.